Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about audio latency and audio buffers. Let's get started. Okay, let us imagine this board is your, your computer. And each of these lines are a thread or a task that your computer has to do. And this, this thing right here is your CPU, this eraser. At any time on your computer, multiple things are happening. And let's say this squiggly line right here is your DAW, where you're doing your audio processing. So you might be recording some music and your CPU is processing away, you know, input, output, input, output, input, output. Oh wait, I need to uh, write some of what you recorded to the disc. Uh, let me uh, go over here, do, do some stuff. Oh, oh, you just got a notification. Uh, you, you're gonna check Chrome. So you might be wondering, well, when my CPU is over here doing this, how am I getting audio back out? That's where the audio buffer comes in. The audio buffer will record a certain amount, depending on the buffer size of audio, so that even if your CPU has to go and process something else, there's something stored to play back. Now, latency comes in because, you know, if you wanna hold, let's say, 10 milliseconds of audio, well, you've gotta delay 10 milliseconds, record it, and then play it back so that you have that 10 millisecond uh, cache or buffer of audio that your computer can play back. Yeah, so the audio buffer is what causes latency. So if you want shorter latency uh, or less latency, I guess you would say, you would want a smaller audio buffer. Now, then you're wondering, well, latency sucks, so wouldn't I want the smallest audio buffer possible? Couldn't I just take it all the way down to the smallest block size? You could, and that is how you set it. You want it as small as possible, the smallest audio buffer that, you're, that your computer can handle. And I say that because the faster your computer is, the faster it'll get back to processing audio. So it won't have to take as much time to get back to input and outputting the audio data. Yeah, so you won't need as much of a big audio buffer. But if your computer is a little bit slower, when it leaves to do something else, it's gonna be there a while. So you want a larger audio buffer so you don't run out of audio to play back. Because when you do run out of audio to play back, that's when you get those clicks and pops that you don't want to hear in your recording. So what things can you do to make it so that you don't have to use such a large audio buffer? Well, you really want to close as many other programs as possible. That way, there's less of a reason for your CPU to jump to one of those other threads to do something else. Uh, you also want to think about your computer hardware. So the more processing cores you have, then the smaller audio buffer you'll need because each core, well, in that example, it was like this eraser was like, you know, a one core CPU. Yeah, the more CPU cores you have, then the more threads or tasks you can handle at the same time. So your CPU won't have to leave as often to do something. Uh, also, having more RAM helps because that reduces the amount of time your computer needs to like go and fetch data from the cache in your hard drive, which you know will distract your CPU even more. And also having a faster hard drive, so you know consider upgrading to an SSD if you haven't already will make it so that when your hard drive has a read or write request, whatever data it was that it needed gets to or from the hard drive quickly so that you can get back to processing audio. Well, yeah, that's just a quick, really simple explanation 
of you know audio latency audio buffers you know what affects those two things how to set up the audio buffer in your DAW. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comment section below. If this video was helpful or informative, be sure to give it a thumbs up uh, and subscribe. Have a great day.